Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and in this week's video I want to talk to you guys about shallowing the club in the downswing. And I think a lot of people think that there's some sort of trick um, or some fast remedy that will get people to do this automatically. But in this video I want to educate you guys more on specific movements that will encourage this to happen. And like always, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. Also, if you have any interest, you can visit my website, jkmgolfacademy.com for details about my online lessons where I can analyze your swing and monitor your progress through specific drills. Check it out. Details are in the description box below. So when someone actually refers to shallowing out the shaft, what they're referring to is the shaft of the club gradually flattening out as it gets closer into impact. And a lot of great players do it. Now, the main reason as to why you want to shallow out the, cl uh, the club is because the more that you do that, the more that you're, you're allowing the club head to be delivered more degrees on an intel path, as opposed to you steepening out the shaft and, and basically throwing the club head over the top and swinging across the golf ball to the left. Now, when a player steepens out the shaft, that's basically the opposite, right? Obviously, to shallowing. So when the club comes closer into impact, the shaft becomes more and more vertical. Okay, And when the club becomes more vertical, you'll notice that the club head moves further fur and further you know, out in front of me until, until eventually the only direction the club head can really travel is across the golf ball, which is what the vast majority of golfers do. Now, I'm not trying to tell you guys that everybody has to shallow out the shaft. Um, just because depending on a player's backswing and the position of the club at the top, some players may actually benefit from steepening out the club um, in the downswing. But just so you guys are aware, um, there are specific positions in the downswing that can indicate whether or not you are shallowing out the shaft enough and was actually more important for you guys to hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over these positions very quickly just so you guys have a bigger picture as to what you're really trying to accomplish. So the first really key position in the downswing is just when the lead arm reaches pretty close to parallel with the ground or maybe just beyond it. And if you guys know the P system, um, then my position is around P5, P5.5. Okay, And at this point, if you guys film yourself from the side view, you want to see that or, or look for the shaft of the club to intersect pretty close to the center of the bicep of your trail arm. Okay, So that would indicate that you're fairly close to plane and that you shallowed out the shaft enough up to, up to this point. All right? Now, if the shaft intersects higher than the bicep, okay, then that would indicate that the shaft is coming down too steep at this point. And reversely, if the shaft is below the bicep, then you've overshallowed it. Okay? Now, the second key position is when the shaft returns pretty close to uh, parallel with the ground, pretty much at P6, now, at this position here, you want to see that either the club head is directly in front of your hands or maybe just slightly behind your hands at this point. Okay. Now, at this point, if the club head is in front of your hands, then again, you're very likely for the club head to enter the ball from outside of the golf ball and you're going to swing the club more likely um, too many degrees from out to in. And if the club head is too far behind your hands at this point, then Again, you're more likely to deliver the club head too many degrees on that into out path. So at this point, yeah, you either want the club head right in front or maybe just slightly behind your hands. So now that you're more aware of the crucial positions that you're trying to hit or avoid in the downswing and that you've already identified yourself as someone that needs to shallow the shaft more, then here are three movements that you can focus on that will help to encourage the shaft of the club to start shallowing more in the downswing. Okay, so movement number one is flexing of the lead wrist, all right? Now, when you flex the lead wrist more in the downswing or overall in the backswing or whatever, you're basically promoting two things, okay? So when you flex that lead wrist, you're one, encouraging the club face to be more closed, okay? And then two, you're allowing the club head to stay behind your hands longer. So I'm just going to use those two crucial positions as an example, okay, kind of getting my lead arm to parallel, about P5, maybe P5.5. P5 so right now my wrist is fairly neutral, fairly flat. Now just watch what happens when I just only add extension to the lead wrist. That's more cupping of the lead wrist. 
So you'll see that the shaft automatically just becomes a bit more steep. The club head also actually moves more in front of me. Okay. Now, if the more I flex that lead wrist, if I kind of over exaggerate a little bit more, you can see that the shaft flattens out and also the club head gets a bit more behind me. Okay. Now at P6 or shaft parallel to the ground, if I, um, this is right now, my wrist is fairly neutral. The more I just add extension or cupping to the lead wrist, that's all I'm going to do. You can see the club head moves further out in front of my hands. Whereas the more, the more I flex it, if I do it over exaggerate, you can see how the club head gets behind me. And also the club head itself um, is angled a bit more down, indicating the club face is a, is a little bit more closed at this point. So this is the, the reason why a lot of coaches are encouraging a lot of players to flex the lead wrist because it gives you the ingredients to actually draw the ball more, right? It gets you to encourage the club face to be more closed and it helps promote the club head to stay behind your hands longer. So now movement number two is to slow down the rate at which you're turning. Okay, so I'm not trying to say to eliminate turn altogether. I think rotation is important, but too many players, when they get to the top, they just start rotating right away and way too early. Okay, and what you guys have to realize is rotation is basically a movement that brings everything more outwards. Okay, it brings your arms, hands, and club head more out in front of your body. Okay, so... Just as an exaggeration, if I get to the top and all I do is rotate from here, do nothing else, you can see how my arms and hands and shaft all move more in front of me. Okay? Now, when, by the time we get to that crucial position, number one, the shaft is going to be further in front of the bicep of my trail arm. Okay? And that's technically getting the shaft more steep. Okay? So if I exaggerate the other way and go up to the top and don't turn okay, as I come down, you can see that it's more likely for my arms and hands and club um, shaft to stay further behind my body, okay? So that, that'll be, make it easier for the, the club to start to shallow out, okay? So you want to play around with the rate at which you're turning, not totally eliminate turn, okay? But if you are a player that does, if you find out that you are a player that does overturn or, or turn too early or too much, then in order for you to slow down the rate at which you turn, it may just have to feel as though you're not turning, okay? Or that you're keeping your body a lot more closed, okay? So instead of spinning out of it, you want to feel as though when you, when you make your downswing, you're keeping your chest and your belt um, closed for a lot longer period of time in the downswing. Okay? And that will definitely give you a chance or a better chance at shallowing out the shaft. So now movement number three is to ensure that you are tilting enough to the trail side. Okay? Now I'm not trying to tell you guys to start breaking your rib cage and start throwing your head back to the right. But you guys need to start be, being more conscious of where your upper body is relative to your lower body. So the, the big mistake is when people get to the top, when they initiate the downswing and they start to rotate really hard, you can see that my upper body is positioned further into the target relative to my lower body, okay? So when that happens, you're actually encouraging your body to rotate at a faster rate and, and give yourself more mobility for rotation, which again, like I said before, is gonna encourage everything be, to be thrown out in front of you more, okay? So if you look at that from the side view, when I get to the top, if I move my upper body in front of my hip, right, that's getting me to rotate a lot and actually throw everything more in front of me, which is going to get the shaft um, more steep or more um, ahead of the middle of my bicep. Okay. Now, reversely, on the opposite side of the extreme, if I get to the top and I start creating more of a separation in the opposite direction where my hip goes more towards and upper body kind of stays more away from the target, then that's actually going to encourage the shaft of the club to, to move more downwards as opposed to outwards, okay? So when you look at that from the side view, if I exaggerate the tilt or the separation, if I tilt my body to the right or to, into the trail side and getting my upper body to stay behind um, or more away from the target relative to my lower body, you can see that the shaft moves more downwards as opposed to outwards, okay? So making sure that you're creating that separation or a little bit of that separation or enough um, is going to, again, give you a chance or give you actually the more range of motion to keep the shaft a bit more behind you longer in the downswing so you can start shallowing it out.
So these three movements are what you're mainly going to have to focus on. Typically, if you want to be able to control the movement of the shaft and also hit those crucial positions that I mentioned to you guys earlier. But I hope after this video, I've at least narrowed down the variables for you. And if you got some extra time on your hands, I would encourage you guys to watch this video next. And I made this video a couple weeks ago and it's about hand depth and it may give you more insight as to some potential backswing errors and downswing errors.